Hey YouTube, Jared Decker here from jareddecker.com. Today I'm doing a review of my new 2019 iMac and how it runs with Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. I am upgrading from a 2014 5K iMac, the first one that came out, and that was a four core i7, four gigahertz. Um, I made a big mistake when I bought that machine and I did not upgrade the graphics card. So it had two gigabytes of VRAM, which gave me a lot of problems over the years. The new ones came out this week. Everybody is complaining about the form factor, uh, not changing in since 2012 or something. I don't really care. I don't care about the bezel size. My only complaint with this model is the SD slot being on the back, which who knows if they're ever going to change. Um, but yeah, it's not that big a deal to me, waiting for a, a different body for the computer. Um, just what the, how the computer functions is what's important to me. Um, my big concern with waiting for the new form factor, because they're very likely going to release one next year, um, is the user upgradable RAM. That's like the one thing left that Apple will let us upgrade ourselves. And Apple charges way too much for the RAM upgrades. So this is huge for me. The day they take that away is probably the day I stop buying IMAX. Um, and they've been taking it away from other products. So hopefully they don't, but <clears throat> there's a good chance they will. Um, so that being said, I bought one this year. The new ones look great. So I went ahead and went upgrade crazy on mine. I got the eight core i9 processor, the Radeon Vega 48 uh, graphics card. I did the one terabyte SSD and I upgraded to 32 gigabytes of OWC RAM myself. Um, after I got the machine, I kind of freaked out thinking that some of these upgrades weren't really necessary for what I'm doing, doing more stills than video. Lightroom, I think can only even use six cores at this point, that might change. Um, and the graphics card, I don't, I don't do VR, I don't do gaming. I, I'm starting to do more video. I don't really know where my, my uh, priorities will be in the future. So I thought I'd just go ahead and get this. And, and now I'm trying to kind of figure out if I actually need it. Um, the SSD, I don't. I really regret getting the one terabyte. I generally only keep my applications and my catalog on my main drive. Everything else is stored externally. So 512 would have been plenty and it's like 400 bucks for upgrade for the one terabyte. So I'm probably gonna send this machine back and downgrade the 512 and I'm trying to make sure that I shouldn't downgrade either of the other options. So if anybody out there has any input as far as the CPU, the graphics card, um, I'd love to hear it. I don't know that much about this stuff. The CPU, I know there was some concerns about thermal throttling and overheating. I've seen some videos saying they're not having issues with that, like people expected to. So probably going to stick with the CPU and I'm probably going to stick with the graphics card. I really don't think I need the extra hard drive space. So again, I will probably be returning this machine and uh, would love any input on the other options. Um, all that being said, let's uh, dive into Lightroom and see how it works. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. Uh, I'll show you my preferences real quick. I'm using the Pro Vega 48 processor, 20 gigs in the camera raw cache. I will be converting to DNG, uh, building one-to-one -one previews and building smart previews. These are photographs taken with a Sony A7R 3 so they're 43 megapixel, uncompressed. Um, let's import and we'll see how long it takes. All right, we are back. Everything is imported. Took a little bit longer than I thought, about five and a half minutes, two and a half of which was just um, creating the one-to-one -one previews. Um, so yeah, that was a, a good chunk of the time. Um, so in loop mode, everything goes quick. Pretty much goes as fast as I can push the button. Uh, develop mode. Same, everything pretty much works 
right away. And zooming in goes pretty quick. Zooming in in library mode. Scrolling. Is there any loading? Nope, everything goes quick. So I do bracket a lot of shots. Um, so I'm curious about the time for creating an HDR. So let's go ahead and make one of those. Now that is crazy fast. That's way faster than my 2014. And will save me a lot of time. Um, and I also edit a lot of these shots in Photoshop. So let's see what we get with uh, opening up Photoshop. Not bad, pretty quick. Um, and how about opening as layers in Photoshop? Sometimes I do the blending manually. Yeah, not bad. Um, not crazy fast compared to my 2014, but. I do a fair amount of luminosity masks. They can take a bit to load. Pretty quick. All right. So that's basically it. It goes fast. So yeah, everything looks great. I think the only other thing I really wanted to test is the export of these images. And let's go for just full-size JPEGs. All right, the export is complete. We are looking at about four minutes to export 100 full-size JPEGs from the A7R3 43 megapixel uh, RAW files. It's not too bad. I can see this thing saving me a lot of time. I actually want to do one more test, which will be an export of full-size TIFF. 